Hi, welcome to this demo of Insight Asset Management. My name is Shane Donaher. I'm a solution engineer here at SBK, and I'll be your guide today. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the sales team or email me directly at sdonaher at spka.com. Insight Assets Management was recently acquired by Atlassian just over a year ago and is now part of the premium tier of the Jira Service Management product. If you have a premium license, you're in luck. You'll get all the Insight Asset Management functionality. It's structured similarly to pro Jira projects and issue types, and you can create as many object schemas within Insight as you need. Uh, this tool is marketed for hardware and software configuration management, but it can also be used to map your entire Jira configuration or an organization's internal structure. So let's take a look here. So inside this portal, we have, this is Jira Service Management on um, premium licensing. So once Jira, you have a premium license, the assets option will appear here in the menu bar. You'll go to this assets option right here. Then we'll take a look here and we see like we have a list of object schemas that are already populated. Now these schemas here, these can be organized by department, by customer, by location. There's various different ways you can organize these. So for instance, if I want to create a new schema and I want to create one for HR, we'll put in HR, I'll create the key HR. We can put in a description here just for testing sake, uh, HR department. Great, now of an object schema called HR. Obviously there's nothing inside of the schema as of yet, but let's look at how we would actually go about creating some objects and then also how they would look when they're fully populated. So to create an object, you need to define its name, its icon and relationship to other types. So if I was click object, you'll see here that we're going to create an object type under company assets. We can change that. We can go to, let's give it a server type and give it a name here. We can call it a Linux server. If you're a techie, let's give it a Linux server and we can create. Now, I can look here in server type. I now have Linux server. I have a physical and a virtual. Now, the attributes of an object type define the criteria surrounding it and include values such as booleans, IP addresses, and dates. We can see this under the attributes tab. So if we want to create a new attribute, we can see here that we have a choice between type. So we can give it an object, a user, a group, a project, status, or bitbucket repository, then type value. As I said, we have a Boolean option, IP address, uh, date, time, email, text area, and so on. So let's go back. So then we'd also be able to see in here, we'll have dependencies and references. So for instance, if I want to see how many Apple machines I have, I would go into my manufacturer, I'd look at Apple, then I'd see I have a computer here that's an Apple machine. And I can see here that I have a MacBook Pro. So let's go look at that. And you can see all of these are all dependent and reference back. So these are all dependencies. And if I was to go back one more to Apple, these are all references. So let's go back to attributes real quick. So there are several types of attributes in Insight. These all include like default, other objects, users, groups, status. The user and group attributes allow you to associate assets with different, with specific Jira users and groups of users. So if I select user, I can then go in here and I can I can pop in a type value. We'll leave that blank here. Let's put in user and let's add. Now, if I was to go back to manufacturer and I edit, I now have a user type and I can select a user. If the user existed, it'll pop in here. So I'll save the user. Here's the user here, Shane Donaher, me. So let's put that in. Now I can go to this user and I can see this user's account. So in insights here, you can see on the left, we have a hierarchical structure. You can view all the objects of a particular type, such as laptops in a list view. By drilling into each object, you can see its details and a stream of activity of everything that's happening with that object. So if we were to look at another one here, uh, so Let's go back to our assets and we'll look at a different object scheme. Uh, these ones here were pulled in via the discovery tool. Now there's two ways you can upload, three ways you can input data into assets. The first way is you can manually enter data. So you can create your own object types, you can create your own attributes and you can manually input all of the information yourself. The second way is you can import a CSV file. 
then that will populate the schemas with all the content from the CSV file. The third way is through the assets discovery tool. The discovery tool is then installed on a server or machine on a network. You set it up, you set up the scans, the scan settings, uh, what information you want to pull in. And then the tool will run periodically, normally every day, and it will go out to the network and it'll pull in every single device that's on that network. And in doing so, it will pull in an abundance of information. So as we can see here, I have this tool pulled in so we can see the discovery tool right here and it's scan settings. So inside the portal here, we can actually check its scan settings. Uh, we can see its collector. Then we can actually see what assets are on the network. So all of them host PCs, devices, laptops, everything. They'll all get reported here under network assets. So now we can look at the host. So every machine is going to get pulled in. And within that, every machine is going to have a significant amount of information accompanying it. So as you can see here, we have quite a lot. So we have the CPUs, we have the network interfaces, we have storage devices, file systems, scanning information, uh, operating system, CPU counts, models, serial numbers. Uh, there's a lot of information that comes with this. And then from that, then you can drill down further. You can see more specific information. So like if we want to see what applications were installed in this machine, we'd come in here and we can take a look at the applications. Uh, we can see when it was installed, when they're updated, um, when that, who the vendor is. Um, so there's quite a lot of information. Same with the services. We can see services that are in here. So we can see the applications, we can see all the information, we can see the vendor, we can see the description, we can see the time of data was installed. And we have other information here that we can see like database services that are installed and running on the machines, uh, what users, patches, when they were installed and updated. Uh, there's a good one back here. Let's take a look at that one. That one may have this information that I want to show you. Perfect. So next we can see all the patches. So when all the security updates were actually pushed out, also referencing the KB articles and the links to them back to Microsoft, the so Windows machine, obviously, and the install dates. And that's the same for all of these. So the more we go through here, the more different dates we'll see. One other cool feature that I love inside here of Jira, you have another view. It's not exclusively shown here when we log in. But if I was to hit graph here, we get to see an entire graph of what the actual network looks like. And it'll give us all the information. So we can just click and we can see with what these are dependent on, what they're tied to, and the same on the other schemas. So if we go back and we take a look at like this one here again, we select graph, and we can see the entire network. And we can see everything here is dependent on this host. If there was more hosts, it would show more of these and they'd all interlink so that's it for today's demo thank you for joining me if you have any further questions you can contact me at s donaher sbka.com or reach out to one of the members of our sales team thank you for your time have a good day